I'd like to show you some examples of how we can use scripting within our specifiers and solvers here in Promax. So if you're familiar with specifiers and solvers, you've obviously used simple operators with your addition, subtraction, division, and multiplication and things. But we can make our expressions much more complex and much more powerful than just that, using JScript as our scripting language. I've got open my Promax help file here, and this gives us a list of JScript math objects that we can also use in our scripting. You'll see that this allows us to use things like we've got our math.cosine if we're needing a cosine or an exponent here. Further down we see a square root option. There's also these things called math.max and math.min functions, and I'll show you an example of those in a minute. But the point being here that we can take our expressions, write much more complex mathematics, and we can also create things such as if-else statements to, to add to the power behind our specifiers and solvers. In this video, I'm going to show you three really useful examples of this JScripting. I'll first show you an example of an if-else statement that we use around a compressor block to change what our objective of our specifier is depending on the conditions around our compressor. Second, I'll show you a math.min function. And for that example, we're going to look at an amine flow rate solver and how we can make it target multiple specs at the same time. And thirdly, I'll show you an example where we use if-else statements along with user value sets to uh, toggle blocks on and off. And we'll use an example of a chiller block that we want to turn on and then off, and, and so forth. And so let's get into our Promax simulation here. Let's actually start here on the first page, our JT stabilizer. And here you'll see I have a sales gas compressor on my sales gas. And depending on what my JT valve pressure was up here, I may or may not need that sales gas compressor. And so if our sales gas needs to be delivered at at least 500 pounds, if our JT valve is above 500 pounds, we won't need the compression. But if it's below 500 pounds, we will indeed need that compression. So in this case, we wouldn't want to just type 500 pounds in as our outlet pressure. Because once again, if our JT valve was above that, we wouldn't want to be dropping pressure acro across our compressor. We'd instead just like to kind of turn it off and leave the sales gas pressure as what the suction pressure is. And so that's what we're doing here. If I open up my sales gas, let's look at this specifier that I've created. You'll see this if-else statement has been written. And what this is doing is it's saying first, if our suction pressure is less than 500 pounds, then we want to specify this stream to be 500 pounds, meaning we want to compress up to 500. Else, so if our suction pressure is not below 500 pounds, if it's already sufficiently high, then we want to leave the pressure coming out of the compressor as the suction pressure, meaning to just leave it at the high enough pressure that it's already at. And so that's what this is going to do, and right now, our JT pressure is above 500, and so we come out at 569.8 PSIG. But if our JT valve is pressure needs to drop, and it does go below 500, our compressor will then compress it up to our desired 500 pound delivery pressure. So that's an, a simple example of an if-else statement. Let me show you another example of some JScripting here on my amine page. I've got here a solver on my amine flow rate, and I have two specs that I'm targeting around my absorber. I first need to make sure my flow rate is sufficient to keep our H2S below our 4 ppm spec, but I also need to make sure my amine flow rate is sufficient to keep my rich loading below 0.45. Depending on the case, you might hit one of these specs before the other, and which spec you hit first will change. And so I want to make sure that my flow rate is sufficient to hit both specs. And I can do that using, again, some scripting. If I open up my stream and let's look at the solver that I've created here on my amine flow rate, I'm using here a math.max function. And what that is going to do is it allows me to write two expressions. So I have my first expression here aiming for an H2S of 4 ppm out of my sweet gas. 
and then the second expression is aiming for a rich loading of 0.45 and what this math.max function does is it's going to report back the higher value of those two expressions and so what that means is here in my solver the solver is going to force it so that these expressions are either at zero or below zero meaning that I'm either right at spec or below spec which is good in this case so you can see from my values down here below that in this case I hit an H2S of 4 ppm's and my rich loading is below its 0.45 spec but if I had a different gas or a different situation and my rich loading was at 0.45 and my H2S was much lower than 4 ppm's that would work just fine as well but this solver is going to maintain both specs the last example I want to show and going back here to our chiller page in this case we are designing a JT skid we may or may not need a chiller and so maybe we want to run multiple scenarios some with a chiller and some without we would like a simple way to just toggle this block on and off as opposed to you know drawing two separate simulations one without a chiller or one without or one with a chiller or we don't want to have to delete the block when we don't want it we just want to toggle it on and off and so that's what we're going to do here I first have created some user values if I open up my project viewer and see these user values I've created and I have two user values set up the first one is going to be an on and off switch and I'm going to say if it's equal to one that means my chiller is off or excuse me if it's equal to one my chiller is on and if it was equal to zero my chiller would be off and then secondly I've specified a desired chiller outlet temperature so if my chiller is on this is the temperature I want it to chill down to now if I come look at the specifier I've created on my chiller outlet temperature let's open that up and we'll see another if else statement but what this statement is saying is if our chiller switch that user value is set equal to one then let's chill down to that chiller temperature that I also have in my user values else you know if my chiller switch is not equal to one if it's equal to zero then we'll just leave our inlet temperature alone and so essentially saying that our chiller is turned off in that case you can see that right now our chiller switch is set to one meaning our chiller is turned on and so we're chilling down to 20 degrees here if I turn my chiller off so I can go back excuse me to my user value set and turn that off then I'll go back into my chiller specifier and rerun my simulation we'll see now that it recognizes my switch is set to zero and so instead of going down to 20 degrees my value is just going to be whatever the inlet temperature ends up being there's some other solvers and things on this um, project and so that's why this value is changing but here it will ultimately converge uh, to an inlet temperature and my chiller is off and so it's not going to affect that temperature okay so that's another useful example of this J scripting and I'm sure you can use your imagination with your different situations to find many more applications for this J scripting